Classic Restos is proudly brought to you by Shannon's, where you can sign up to be a member of the Shannon's Club, your local Holden Certified Service Centre, Pace Farm the Enjoyable Egg, and Heron Forbes Machinery House, where you can buy online. This week I bring you to Winton Raceway, Victoria, Australia, where I obtain an exclusive chance to get up close and personal with a very special VF Ute, thanks to Holden, in this week's Classic Restos, On The Road. <laughs> Back in 2013, Holden shipped out a VF SS Ute to Germany. This one right here was sent to the gruelling Nürburgring racetrack to set a fastest world lap record for a commercial or utility vehicle. There was only one problem though, because back then the record didn't exist. But before I get too ahead of myself, here's a little bit about the guy that takes care of this incredible Ute here at Winton. Meet Jeff Grech. This guy is a true mechanical enthusiast and if his experience was on a menu in a restaurant, he'd be eating a different meal each night there for a year. These are our hardcore guys, the ones that are left. Jeff was a GMH experimental engineer, operating a dyno in 1980 and 1981. Ex Holden dealer team, race mechanic 1982 1985. Volvo dealer team, race mechanic 1986. Perkins Engineering as a race mechanic 1986 to 1990. Nissan Motorsport, workshop and team manager 1991 to 1993. Then onto the Holden Racing Team as manager and general manager from 1993 to 2003. Then director of TWR Australia 1998 2003. And the kaleidoscope of challenges didn't stop there. Jeff then became the operations manager of Holden Motorsport from 2003 to 2006, and the list that continues attributing to the accolades of Jeff Gregg. Today, Jeff is the operations manager of Winton Raceway, and yep, Jeff's a Holden legend. Coming here daily to work and having these cars iconic Holden cars, especially the Ute, around me every day is fantastic. It just goes to show you what Holden means to me and to the rest of the country. Holden being part of Winton Motor Raceway and Ford, it's becoming a real legacy for those, those owners to come to the raceway, look at these iconic cars, drive them around the track and feel part of the special history of Australian motor racing and automotive culture. And our VF that went to Germany and actually smashed a record and really for a, for a ute that usually carries around dogs and beers in the back is over racing around one of the most iconic circuits in Europe certainly would have, uh, I guess, brushed a lot of Europeans <laughs> the wrong way. The Aussie V8 ute, there's nothing like it, it's so good and it'll be a part of the history forever in Australia. That ute behind me with the six litre engine, the LS series, um, really good engine, fantastic power, and as you, as you can see, you know, around a racetrack, quite handy as far as performance and capability. Each day I get to the track, look out my window, see, see a track with um, activity on it, it's, it's just a sight to, to be around this place with such a big history. You know, it's 60 years this year since the track first was turned dirt. So it's, it's quite an iconic legend in motorsport in, in Australia, and I'm certainly proud to be part of it. If a vehicle can handle Nürburgring in Germany, it can handle anything. It proved yet again that Holden's testing and development produced world-class cars with world-class handling. Today, just for me to experience a drive, thanks to Holden, is beyond words.
Well, what an exhilarating experience that was. Not for one moment would I ever try and profess that I'm a professional race car driver. But here is a guy that has a lot of talent. His name is Rob Trubiani. And here is the original footage of Rob setting the time record that day at Nürburgring in Germany. Holden Dynamics engineer and test driver Rob Trubiani says the pressure of beating a time was gone, but that didn't make the team any less determined. To tackle the Nürburgring and set a world record for a commercial or utility vehicle was an incredible feat. Similar to Bathurst, Nürburgring is one of the toughest, insane, demanding racetracks in the world that has taken lives and is not good with absorbing errors behind the wheel. This Aussie-built, six-litre, naturally aspirated V8 ute handled everything that was thrown at it. The ute was completely standard, aside from an extra little bit of negative camber on the front wheels, though Holden says it was still within production tolerances. As for the sound, well, in my opinion, nothing sounds better than that smooth, revving induction that only a V8 can provide. As gruelling as setting the record was, brakes and tyres were the only bits changed during the arduous task. A week later, serving up 35 laps, or more than 720 wide open throttle kilometres later, an 8 minute 19.47 second lap was set. This time, the Euros can step aside. Australians can be proud. Regardless of what brand you follow, make it known that this VF SS V Redline Ute has set the bar at Nürburgring. The man himself, Jeff Gregg, how are you, mate? Good, mate. Th good, thanks, Fletch. You've got a good job each day, haven't you? Turning up here at Winton for work. It's absolutely fantastic. <laughs> Marvellous. A nice, uh, I guess it's a nice stage to be at in your career now. It is, it is, Fletch. I'm around cars like the, the Ute here and some classics and race cars, so it, it really, uh, probably a highlight of my career, really. You've got some great runs on the board. Yeah, I've worked with some great people, and that's, that's, that's what it's all about. You know, you have great people, great team, yeah. you get good results. Yeah. To the likes of Peter Brock, Freddie Gibson. Yeah, yeah, LP, Mark Scaife, Lounsey. Yeah. So really good guys to work for, and and uh, we had some great results. It's a fantastic atmosphere here, a place like Winton, I guess, to encompass. Uh, wow, all that, all the, all that, the the vibe of that good stuff. You know, these big names, uh, the, the the drivers that were huge twenty and thirty years ago, they still hold a, a massive legacy today. Up and coming drivers as well. Um, you're in a good spot. Yeah, you know, I often bump into some of the older drivers that are up here spectating. Alan Moffat, Jimmy Richards, and then you see the young guys coming through and it really, uh, and some of them are really talented and you, you look for them in, on the track and their results. So you, you get both, end, both, both ends of the stick, so it's good. Good on you, Jeff. Well done. Well, again, I've got to thank Holden. Uh, my contacts at Holden for uh, lining up this guy and uh, doing our, our little feature on this incredible VF Ute. How many, how many of you would like this year, eh? 15,000 Ks on the clock, like brand new. 15,000, well, uh, there have been some hard Ks in that, <laughs> in that 15,000, but it's still a fantastic vehicle to drive. Yeah, it is Fletch. It is. It's a ripper vehicle. Good on you, Jeff. Thank you, mate. Cheers. Thank you. Always only too happy to turn up and showcase a guy like Jeff Greck and, of course, a place such as Winton. Thank you, Jeff. OK, thanks, Fletch. I've been a motoring enthusiast all my life. My Coupe 4 is rare and very special. A real performance car with all-wheel drive grip. I'm not a car club bloke and I don't work on it myself, but I do have a great mechanic. One day, I might even get that HQ. When it comes to insurance, it's got to be Shannon's. Shannon's shares your passion. Call Shannon's on 13 46 46. Shannon's, insurance for motoring enthusiasts. When it comes to cars, there are some brands that will remain with us forever, no matter what. The Holden was always Australia's own car, held high in the hearts of many. Those lines, that chrome, the stories around them and the people that owned them. 
from the classic through to the final. You can still trust in genuine Holden and AC Delco parts, available through the Holden Certified Service Network. And from the mighty VF 6 litre ute to this FJ ute, talk about a complete full circle. It was 1951 when Holden began the production of their ute and it was just three years after the sedan of the same model. And it's time for John now. How are you, mate? Very well, Fletch. That's good, mate. Thanks for bringing it along. Oh, you're welcome, mate. This FJ, I've got to say, look, there may be similar around. I think in, in this case, there's no such thing as better. How do you improve on this? It's a restored vehicle. It's concourse level. It's superbly done. What a pleasure it must be to own this vehicle. Oh, it is. It's a, it's a beautiful vehicle. It's been a long time to get it to this stage, but I'm so happy with it. Here we are in regional New South Wales. Is it the old story where it was found on a property or near a dam or maybe in it, <laughs> what's the deal? I bought it from um, Harden, Poland dealership, where it sat for 10 years, I believe, and then I, I bought it. Before that, it was um, used in a cherry orchard, carrying fruit. It's great, isn't it? Isn't it lovely to hear the stories of, you're, you're lucky that you know this, to, to, hear, yeah. to know the history. Uh, so how many years have you had it, John? 15 years. Tell us about the resto. What was it like? Well, we, when we picked it up, we drove it. We brought it on a trailer to to here. We got it into the shed. Um, from there, it was jack up, stripped down. My mate, he couldn't take it to the panel shop at the time, so I rubbed it back to bare metal completely by hand, rebuilt what I could, and then after about two years, it went to the panel shop where it slowly progressed. Uh, so you, you have done a lot of stuff yourself? Oh, yeah, yeah. Also, too, I'd like to um, add that we're here at the premises of Lee and Thomas here in Goulburn, and John works here and got him on his day off. And we arranged this to turn up this morning uh, to get John and his youth. So you're, you're one of the, the key players behind the scenes here in the workshop, too. So a handy bloke, a handy bloke, and, a, and it shows with what you've done here with this youth, John. Yeah. Well, being, being a um, mechanic by trade, it, um, it did help an awful lot. Looking around the engine bay... I love this. It's, you've done a beautiful job, John. The wiring harness. To see uh, the coloured, the cotton that you've used, uh, keeping that period correct, it looks wonderful, doesn't it? Yeah, it does look good. It makes, it makes a difference when you use the right stuff. Now, how did you go with, uh, with your pictures and trying to replicate it? Well, not, well, back to when it was a brand new vehicle. Um, how, did, how did you go there, like in terms of uh, interior uh, colours, uh, the paint colour, what, what did you use there? Did you just go by a bit of guess or did you go back to the original colours that the ute was? No, we went back to as close to original colours as possible. We went off the compliance plate for the colour. Thank you for sharing your ute with us. It works in with a very special episode with uh, just featuring the, uh, the, the VF ute uh, setting the commercial vehicle uh, speed lap record at Nürburgring, which uh, can be proudly said that an Australian, an Aussie VF Commodore Redline ute did that. So this FJ, um, obviously part of, of that same episode. So again, John, thank you very much for coming along, mate. No worries. Thank you, Fletch. This ute of mine here, um, it just means everything, you know. I've always wanted one and uh, it took me a long time to find one and I enjoy driving it. Getting to go out and drive the ute is such a, a really good feeling. You know, you're just driving along and people just driving past and always hanging out the window looking and thumbs up and such a fantastic feeling to take it out and actually drive it. Manual, three on the tree. A lot of people these days, you say, oh, three on the tree, and they think, what are you talking about? It's the column shift, crunch gearbox, you've actually got to stop to go back to first gear. You can't full synchro, so it goes straight through. It's not like a, a late model car now. It's, it's magic to drive, it's, it's good. It's a good feeling to get it out and actually enjoy it. They won't be making Holdens anymore. They've turned off all the lights and locked up all the doors. What about the people who work the factory floor? They won't be making Holdens anymore. They won't be making.
breaking hearts anymore. Will the country ever hear the lion's roar? It's not a business failure. It's a tragedy, Australia. That they won't be making holdings anymore. No, we won't be making holdings anymore. Are you a motoring enthusiast? Does your current insurer understand your passion? At Shannon's, we're motoring enthusiasts, just like you. We understand the passion you have for your special car or bike. But did you know that Shannon's will also ensure your daily drive, the car you drive every day? So if you're a motoring enthusiast, you've got to be with Shannon's. So call Shannon's on 13 46 46. Shannon's, insurance for motoring enthusiasts. They may not be making the classic Holden anymore, but the legacy lives on. You can still have a Holden certified service using genuine Holden and AC Delco quality parts at over 180 centres across Australia. Go to holden.com.au to find your nearest centre. Book your Holden in, maintain the pride. And of course it goes without saying, if you own a classic, it just has to be insured with Shannon's. Why not pick up the phone and give Shannon's a call for a quote and a chat on 134646. And if you're yet to discover the Shannon's Club, it awaits you. There are some fantastic in-house productions there by Shannon's. Competitions, opportunities to chat with other enthusiasts, the list goes on. For more information, visit shannons.com.au and discover Australia's largest automotive online hub. The Aussie Holden Ute has been an iconic part of homegrown manufacturing since the 48215. Holden's first ute, or Coupe Utility, as it was officially called, was released on the 30th of January 1951, three years after the sedan. This gave rural buyers in particular, and some tradies in town, the chance to own one vehicle that could round up the sheep, carry some fence posts across the paddock, through to putting on the clean clothes for town, or a dance on Saturday night. And and it had its own original unique style that wasn't around in any other locally made ute. By the time the mid-1950s came around, while the British government gave the go-ahead for commercial television and a nuclear weapon went off at Woomera in South Australia, a big cracker went off at Holden at the same time, and that was the mighty FJ Ute. This time, it was the first of an all-new body, making this show pony into an even greater workhorse. An all-new body with curved windscreen, 12-volt electrics, and of course the trusty little grey engine still remained. Straight away, it was a continued hit, featuring its bold new grille that oozed some class, and some minor mechanical improvements had also been incorporated into the car. It was the FJ Ute that actually reinforced the legend, and Australia's love affair ramped up with the Holden Ute. A very stylish Holden Ute hit the Aussie driveways of countless thousands in 1956. It was the FE Holden Ute, retaining the 2.2 litre 6, now with more compression, 3-speed manual gearbox, wishbone and coil spring front suspension, and live rear axle on semi-elliptic leaf springs, the FE Holden hosted 13-inch wheels, wearing 6.4-inch cross-ply tyres. There were vacuum-operated windscreen wipers that used to go flat out at traffic lights while you were stopped, a more refined hydraulic clutch actuation and an improved recirculating ball steering box. Service access was improved with fluid reservoirs being relocated higher up and the bonnet held open by spring-loaded hinges. Dual tail lights were now fitted as well. Blinkers, a first for the FE. The new interior featured an all-new dash fascia, pendulum front pedals and a larger lockable glove box. By the time 1958 rocked its way around the clock, the launch of the FC happened and by this time it was clear that every new Holden sedan that was launched also came as a station wagon and a ute. Holden in these times never cut corners with the chrome work. Its new grille and separate parking lights easily identified the FC for 1958. Fun fact, 
Early FC Utes had a body coloured painted grill, headlight and taillight surrounds. These in fact proved so unpopular that in 1959 versions were given the chrome treatment just like the sedans. When the FB and EK came around, these were referred to as the new shape, built over the existing FE FC platform, along with a slight power increase and a greater wraparound windscreen saw the Holden Ute enter the 1960s. The FB series was released in January 1960. Engine power was raised to 75 horsepower because this year had more cubic inches under the hood. Wheels magazine road tested a special station wagon and it ran 80 four miles per hour. The EK followed in mid-1961 with its new grille, badging and electric wipers. The EJ and EH Utes will always remain popular 60s classics. Introduced at a time of increased market competition, an all-new body and driveline and brake improvements kept the Holden Ute at number one. The EH followed in August 1963. Now there was a pair of engines that transformed the Ute's performance. Traction was now the biggest issue and the brakes were now found to be inadequate for the lively power that came from its new more powerful red engines. The 149 and the 179, up to now 115 horsepower on tap. In mid-1965 came the dramatically styled HD range with its cheese cutter leading edge front fenders and ball joint front suspension. The HD ute was no paragon of luxury. With all the previous ute models, it came standard with vinyl floor coverings, a simple bench seat and no heater or demister. But the Holden Ute loyalty amongst Australians continued. The HD was followed by the revised HR and two new engine capacities, 161 cubic inches and the popular 186. Again, the HR retained the HD's rear styling and taillights. It's the HK, HT and HG, and it's time to introduce the Belmont and the Kingswood. With the upmarket Kingswood variant added, V8 power was now available. These late 60s utes were the first choice for both tradies and the farmers. Another model change came in 68 with the release of the HK, followed by the T and the G. These utes had a longer wheelbase than previously, resulting in a longer tray and slightly greater load carrying capacity. HK buyers could add a whole range of options previously unavailable to ute buyers, so a little luxury started to creep in around the edges. How about a Kingswood ute with a V8, T-bar automatic and four-speed floor shift, power disc brakes, limited slip diff, carpets, reclining bucket seats, air conditioning, the list goes on. This was luxury unheard of in a Holden ute a decade earlier. HT Herald release of the all Aussie 253 and 308 V8 engines. HG introduced the Trimatic 3-speed automatic as an option for all engines as well. The HQ came about in 1971 and so did the Sandman. The HQ series brought very contemporary styling to the humble Holden Ute, complete with the full length box section chassis and a far more stylish interior with proper ventilation, plus a vast range of optional extras. The driver and passengers, however, still had to sit on a bench seat, although in this era, bucket seats were becoming a more commonplace option. Under the bonnet were two six-cylinder engines, a 173 and a 202, for those that wanted a bit more power. But if you really wanted some grunt, you could specify either one of the locally made 253s or 308 V8s. The Sandman was distinguished by its long sweeping side stripes, rear decals, distinctive Sandman emblems, as well as GTS vented guards and road wheels. It instantly became a hit amongst the surfing community, and if Holden had only made a genuine accessory part mattress to fit the back. When the HJ and HX came around, grills aside, there is no way you could tell these models apart from the back. These were similar cars, different emissions. A new squared off front, the HJ released in late 1974, looked quite upmarket when compared to its predecessor. An entire interior makeover, including a new dash layout with improved seating. In mid-1976, the HX series was released with its new low emission engines being centre of attention. Grills aside, there is very little to distinguish these two models apart. 
And most of us remember when the RTS badge came out. This was on the HZ and RTS transformed the Ute. The Aussie workhorse now handled as good as it looked with the advent of radial tuned suspension, taking it from an old style soft riding cruiser into a much improved sporty handling package. Operated springs and dampers, a stiffened front sway bar and rear bar added, along with totally revised front suspension geometry, put the Holden well ahead of competition in the handling stakes. In 1980, an intended new look for the decade emerged. The WB arrived with a fully revised front grille and unique taillights. With the sedan and wagon range discontinued, it was left to the WB commercial range to fly the flag for the Aussie Holden we grew up with. In terms, the last chrome bumper car as we traditionally loved, the WB was it, the last of the toughed out stance ute. The base model front, reflective of automotive times, hosted a basic metal slat grille, so to improve the Kingswood look was added to all models before the year was out. Shades of FC in 1959, and standing pole high proud in Deneloquin, New South Wales, a trusty last WB ute. You legend. Well, what do you think of that? One of the last of Holden's Utes, the amazing VF6 leader, setting a lap time record at Nürburgring. And of course, through to John's 1955 FJ Ute. I hope you enjoyed the show. Until next week, no matter where you're watching Classic Restos from, please ride and drive safe. I'm Fletch, and I thank you very much for watching. You can like and follow us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash classic restos TV and watch catch up episodes at shannons.com.au. Classic Restos is proudly brought to you by Shannons, where you can sign up to be a member of the Shannons Club, your local Holden certified service centre, Pace Farm the Enjoyable Egg, and Heron Forbes Machinery House, where you can buy online.